Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Neo 2. Last time, Tukichiro, possessed by a powerful ancient yokai named Otagemaru, released two other infamous yokai, Shuten Doji, who he fought and beat, and Tamamo no Mai, who escaped. And now, having risen to the preeminent position in government, Tukichiro has had a lavish, ornate, gold-laden residence built in the heart of the capital, which he has named Jirakudai, with its stone walls and defensive towers making it more akin to a fortress than a regular abode. This glimmering construction forms a potent symbol of Tukichiro's dreams, driven by his continued thirst for the power of the spirit stones. The intricate design is a testament to the wealth and power of its owner, and the mere sight of this place is said to leave onlookers completely speechless. え、しみしてありますわ。どこへ行ってしまったんやろうか。あの憎めないお人柄は茶の湯を通して道を正そうと努めてきましたが王安に見せられて人の心まで失ってしまうとは天界に世を頼んできます So, greed-driven asshole with bad taste erects giant golden palatial home. The story is all this time, huh? Jirakudai, August of 1596. Take note of that. August of 1596. Uh, I haven't been pointing out the dates too much, but remember that the first mission of this game takes place in March of 1555. So it's been 41 years in game time. The first mission of Neo 1 takes place in the year 1600. Uh, and the epilogue only takes place, I believe, three years after that. So we're starting to close the gap and approaching uh, concurrency with the events of the first game. In the intro to this episode, I mentioned Otakemaru possessed Tokichiro, uh, unsealing two other equally ancient, powerful yokai, one of whom we beat last mission, Shuten Doji, uh, and the other was Tamamo no Mai. There are two very distinct possibilities when it comes to Tamamo no Mai, uh, at least as far as these games go. So first, remember the final boss from the last Neo 1 DLC, the one that takes place during the uh, Siege of Osaka? It's the Nine-Tailed Fox. And it has a similar appearance to the Tamamo no Mai we saw escape during that cutscene in the last mission. And Tamamo no Mai is also a Nine-Tailed Fox, according to uh, its folklore roots. Also, this is a really quick shortcut really don't have to struggle too much to get to this one. 
The other possibility is that Tamamo no Mai is another name for the boss of this mission, Lady Osakabe, who Takichiro intends to wed. However, she's already based on an existing mythological yokai, Osakabe Hime, or Princess Osakabe, uh, the Lady of Himeji Castle. But also, she may have also been an ancient fox yokai. And also, very small spoiler for the fight coming up, uh, but she does have hair tentacles that look both like the nine-tailed fox from Neo 1 and like the thing that escaped in the last mission, so it's really hard to say. And then as for shooting Doji, there is some stuff that I forgot to mention, but first we have a couple of refights in this mission, the first one being a Nenra. So here's the plan. Uh, I'm gonna cut the refights, except this really cool animation. I love that transition. Uh, I'm gonna cut the refights because you've seen all of these bosses before. Uh, but just in case you wanna see the refights, I'm gonna post them separately as an intermission. Uh, and the refights in order are gonna be a Nenra, Yatsunokami, and Kasha. And that should just about put the cap on the Anenra refight. Two more refights to go, and then the boss of the level. But the level itself is also pretty cool, aside from the refights. Also, the nice thing about the refights is they all drop their soul cores again, except they're much higher levels this time around. And you can kind of see where that's going, huh? Since we refight Yatsunokami. The Yatsunokami Soul Core that I have equipped is still the, like the level. Th oh! <laughs> that was intentional. I uh, I did the math. I carried the one, and I knew that that would end up like that. Perfect. Uh, yeah, we still have that level what 30, 40 ish Yatsunokami Soul Core. The one we get from this level is like level 130 or something. Which means all of its stats just skyrocket. Which means when we equip it, we have those multipliers on our guardian spirits for attack and defense. That's going to make an enormous difference. The stonks are going up. <laughs> Numbers go up and brain releases dopamine. <laughs> Oh, right, I was going to talk about uh, shooting Doji a little bit. Uh, there's some stuff I forgot to mention in the midst of the fight last time. So in folklore, Shuten Doji is indeed a powerful ancient yokai who was slain by none other than Minamoto no Yurimitsu. Ooh, hello! For, I, I didn't think he was going to follow me that far. Uh, he, Minamoto no Yurimitsu is the same person who mythically slew the Tsuchigumo. Remember the giant spider that came up in Neo 1. Uh, and the funny thing about this story between uh, um, Yurimitsu and Shuten Doji is that Shuten Doji was decapitated, according to the myths. But his head remained very much alive and tried to bite Minamoto's head off. Uh, but he failed because Minamoto had stacked a bunch of helmets on top of each other. Like a cloud. <laughs> But it paid off, so it turned out to be the 200 IQ play. <laughs> and then also, a little cool detail about the boss. Uh, in the game lore, he was weakened with poison sake and then trapped. Uh, which is why he's actually very weak to poison attacks. It builds up on him very quick, and the, the damage that he takes from every tick is quite high. So if you're having trouble with shooting Doji, uh, get some poison attacks, get some poison weapons, some yokai abilities that inflict poison. Oh, she's so agile. It's very hard to lock uh, this enemy type down until you get her out of stamina. Uh, never like that burst attack. 
because I like keeping my distance from this enemy, and I can never close in quite quick enough to, to catch the first hit. Oh, that's such a fun one. Oh, and I have a high level on Ryoki Soul Core now because I did the uh, the final dojo mission for Anmyo Magic that finally unlocked. Uh, and unfortunately, there's not a cool boss to fight for that one. It's just you fight a couple of yokai in successive waves, and then the final one is just the on Ryoki boss from uh, from Neo One. Then do we want to drop down here? I think so. Can't hurt. Nah, it just brings us back to the shrine area. Or the, the bridge. There are some pretty nifty shortcuts in this level. And then coming out here, I want to be a little bit careful that I don't get sandwiched or pincered between two enemies. Uh, namely this one, because I think it's a Roku Rokubi. Yeah. I still have that Neo 1 instinct where these enemies are actually scary. Namahages, they're, like, their danger carried over from Neo 1 to Neo 2. Namahages are still really, really scary enemies to fight. Roku Rokubis in Neo 1 were also really dangerous, but in Neo 2, uh, they feel super nerfed. And I don't know if it's their speed, their aggression, or what. And yet, I still treat them like the threats they used to be. Uh, but then there's also a hand cannon yokai and my boy with the short sword. We want to get under that. That's one of the easier burst counters in the game, uh, along with that fire breathing attack from shooting Doji last time. Then we're going to life leech this because we're a little low on health, and this is more efficient than using an elixir. Even though I have like a hundred of them in stock at this point. Yeah, we're not going to be running out of elixirs anytime soon. By the way, this is the uh, one of the last three main missions of the game. There's this one, uh, one that is just a boss fight, one that is essentially just a cutscene, and then two actual missions after this. I'm gonna watch that tight little hallway while he swings his big axe around. Oop. That's a little spooky. Luckily, he didn't follow that up with anything. Uh, I may have had to pop my yokai form as a no ship button. I think that patrol is also a Raku Rakubi. But we don't actually need to go down that way. Uh, oh no! Come on, there we go. <laughs> I was kind of hoping that I could take that out in, in one small combo before the Kasarigama yokai had had aggro had gotten to me. A bit of a calculated risk that didn't pay off. Uh, thankfully, I didn't actually need to pop my yokai form. Didn't need to waste it there. I'm going to make pretty heavy use of it in the upcoming boss, uh, and you'll see why. Course, I forgot about the hole in the floor. <laughs> oh, 
it would not be a Souls-like LP without me falling down some kind of pit. Multiple times at that. I know it's happened before in this LP. Uh, the all-time greatest falling death is still the one from uh, the 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 church in Dark Souls 3. Oh, that's so satisfying. Pretty soon, uh, that flipping attack in high stance is going to be replaced with more spinning shit. just need I think it's one or two more skill points which will will accumulate enough proficiency to get those pretty soon ah okay we did end up coming back here we just ended up taking a roundabout way around because we fell down a pit so yeah we'll fight this why not managed to evade the poison not bad Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't believe none of that counted as backstab damage, even though I was directly behind it. Still, uh, the results speak for themselves. It was pretty good damage. And once again, we've worked our way back here. This one took a little bit longer to open up. And now, right back into another Dark Realm. Uh, so you can see our objective is the big Amrita Crystal once again. I... Mm, almost forgot that was there, but I just remembered that there was some kind of ambush right at the threshold there. Tricky, tricky gaki. Uh, you notice the lit lantern uh, in the distance on the right? We've seen that trap before. That is going to spawn a Kuroka. So we're kind of trying to draw as many enemies... Ah, that's... Oh, the last hit did Clipper. Uh, we're trying to draw these enemies out so we don't have to aggro the Kuroka and fight everything all at once because then this section's going to get really dicey really fast. And she is just insistent about backing up towards it. She really wants to bait us in. Which is making this harder than it needs to be. Plus, every time she jumps backwards out of our range... Yeah, this isn't... I need to do this. Ooh. If she had grabbed me, I would have died. Hopefully we can keep the pressure on so she doesn't leash and, and despawn. Good, 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 good. Awesome. We're saying the, uh... One of the problems with that fight that drew it out so much is when she backs up, she's getting healing over time from the crystal. Oh, hello. Forgot about you. Anyone else? No, we're good? Okay. So now if we skirt the left side, we can destroy the crystal without having to deal with the Kuroka. Oh! Ooh! I almost forgot about the pit again! Okay, where did the shot come from? Oh, okay. I think I get it. It's right up the stairs. Which is conveniently the last enemy before our next refight. Yatsuno Kami! There's gonna be some snake on snake action in that fight. Spell this. I lied. The cannon uh, yokai was not the last one. This is a really tight space to be fighting in, so we want to make quick work of him. 
Look at that. Critical hit. Good. Watch his ragdoll freak out a little bit and try to eject itself into the astral plane. <laughs> Then any more Kodama. I don't hear it. So maybe not. Oh no, there is a Nurakabe though. Come on, no fight. Oh hey, it's happy. Great. And I don't even remember what the point of that Nurakabe is. I, uh, usually they hide... Uh, uh, Hot spring? Not sure if that's the case here. No, nah, it totally is. Damn, I love Nurikabes. Such a fun mechanic. Oh, and it did lead to a Kodama. That's really cool. And a shortcut. Wow, I forgot all about this Nurikabe. I don't know if I've ever found this one, actually. Huh. Don't like that. Especially when we're right at the door to Yatsu no Kami. So we're going to put pure on our weapon. That's going to help us out a little bit. Should be able to end this during... Oh, yeah. Especially now that she's falling down for the critical. Didn't even get a chance to do that, though. Mm, that sweet, sweet soul core. Got big plans for that. And now we have one more left, and that's going to be... How do I keep forgetting? Oh, Kasha. There we go. Uh, so the first time that I came through here... The way I thought that this worked was that the game somehow uh, had collected information about your most used yokai abilities and presented you with those three yokai to refight. Or those three bosses, rather. Uh, but then I looked into it afterwards and nope, it's not that interesting. It's just, it's set in stone. It's always going to be a Nenra. Yatsu no Kami and Kasha. Uh, also, there are... There's a Mizuki and a Gozuki in here. But not part of the required path. Also, one of those is not a boss. I think it's the Gozuki. We'll be seeing another Gozuki, actually, before the game ends. Uh, and you can see this one is healing, plus it has the red aura around it. So, you know there's a crystal nearby. Also... Am I crazy, or did the crystal prevent... Oh, shit. Tried to run it to the crystal, and now this... Yep, yep, yep. Uh, did the crystal prevent him from having his stamina broken? Because that's why I initially stopped trying to fight him and just went looking for the crystal. Yeah, it's in this room. I don't remember how to get in, though. So, I'm going to run around a little bit more. And if things get dire enough... I mean, the boss is right there up the stairs. This is not... Um, oh, hey. We'll free this Kodama while under grave threat. The Raku Rakubi is slow and can't round that corner very quickly. I mean, I don't have to fight any of these enemies I would just like to for the sake of it if that's an option but hey I'm not gonna spend too much time trying to get into that room just to fight enemies I don't have to onwards to the Kasha refight God, that transition's still cool ooh perfect fight started off a little bit troubled, but couldn't ask for a more flawless ending. Now there is very little left of the level. Uh, there's still a little bit to be done, like we have to open up a shortcut, 
just in case the worst should happen on Lady Osakabe, who is kind of tough. It's another sort of gimmick fight, uh, but this one's a little bit tougher than the last one, which was Datara Bochi. Oh, Scampus, little buddy! So that was actually kind of important in establishing that the Lady of the Castle seems to be possessed, which I think I think squares with both the lore for Osakabe Hime, the yokai, but also... Uh, no, no, that actually doesn't square with the Nine-Tailed Fox one. That's consistent with the, with the, um, the mythology of Osakabe Hime of Himeji Castle. So again, it just further muddies the water between, like, whether or not Tamamo no Mai is Osakabe Hime or the Nine-Tailed Fox uh, that we saw in Neo 1 at the end of the final DLC. Both are entirely valid possibilities. Uh, I actually really like the idea that it's the Nine-Tailed Fox that William fights. I, I just think that's a cooler tie-in. But this one makes more sense. Plus, we just fought Shuten Doji in the previous mission, so it would make sense that we would go from him to uh, to Tamamo no Mai, who was also released, to Otake Maru to complete that trinity. Because in the in-game lore, they're all grouped together and mentioned together as, like, the three most powerful and ancient malevolent yokai. And now from here, we open up that shortcut back to the previous shrine. Cool, cool, cool. But the kind of insane thing about that is nowhere in that trinity of ancient powerful yokai is, like, the most famous and I thought most feared of all, which is um, Yamato no Orochi. But maybe I'm wrong about that. I'm not exactly a Japanese mythology expert here, so... Never ignore that as a possibility that I'm just wrong about my facts here. <laughs> yeah, this is so cool! She possesses the entire castle! But most of the fight is against uh, these hairy tentacles. Same as, like, the same look as the the makeup of the Nine-Tailed Fox from Neo 1, but also the same look as the, uh, the Tamamo no Mai that escaped in the cutscene, where Takichiro releases Shuten Doji and uh, the, the Tamamo no Mai. So the idea here is every tentacle that we destroy Oh, those teeth are horrifying. They're nasty, shiny-looking human teeth. Uh, every one of these that we defeat depletes about a quarter of the stamina. So after four, it's going to cause the main eye of the castle to become exposed for us to lay into. That's why I'm saving up my yokai form in this level, so that I can use it twice uh, and hopefully two cycle this. So we're gonna aim to be destroying eight tentacles in total over the course of the fight. And you can see that you're attacked from pretty much all angles, including from above during this. By attacks of all elements. And those projectiles are huge, so they're kind of a pain to dodge. Especially considering where your attention is going to be focused most of the time, in front of you. Uh, and then you'll also have some of the tentacles above doing, like, laser attacks. 
and the burst attacks are really easy and a, and a, a good opportunity to get some damage in. Uh, so now we're going to run over, pop our yokai form, and just try to lay in. We're aiming for about half health. Yeah, that looks good. Might be a little bit short. I hope we don't have, like, a magic pixel left for that third phase. And now, for the second go around, we're in the Dark Realm, which doesn't really change that much, uh, unlike other fights. You do have to watch all the status ailments, though. It's not too bad if you get burned, but frozen or electrified are really nasty. Blocking does negate a lot of the damage, though. Uh, you'll still get the elemental status buildup, and you'll still take a little bit of chip damage, but not nearly as much. And then whenever you get the chance, you want to hit it directly in the eye for some, some critical damage. So now that we only have one left, and we have full anima gauge. This should be in the bag. Uh, hopefully gonna save yeah, my anima so I can I can let loose a Yatsu no Kami in the final phase for the final burn. And we're right next to it so we don't even have to waste time transforming before it hits the ground. Uh, this bodes really well. Hell yeah! さあ。That is going to do it for now, everyone. Next on the list is the Otakemaru Possessed Tokichiro. And the penultimate episode of the Neo 2 Let's Play. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one. Also, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell. All the YouTube algorithm things. Uh, I both appreciate all of those things, and it helps the channel out. Have a good one.